my first guests are both presidents of different charters of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Sitting next to me is Sandy Alexander. He's the president of the New York City Charter. And next to Sandy is Deacon Proudfoot, who is the president of the Oakland, California chapter. Uh, and Deacon, the first question is, what do the Hells Angels mean to you? What are the Hells Angels to you? Well, it's a family. What you know, kind of family? Well, it's a group of people that come together and, uh, like to me, I interpret it as I was raised in the country and uh, it's the closest thing in the city that I found to country people. How so? We all have motorcycles, right? We have a common denominator, our motorcycles. And through those motorcycles, it brought us all together and love for each other. But a lot of people have motorcycles. Ron Ziegler, the former president's press secretary, has a motorcycle now, but he's not a Hells Angel. What makes the Hells, Angel, Hells Angels different from other people who... A brotherhood of men. How so, Simon? It's a brotherhood of men. Like, uh, you know, it, it takes a man to be a Hells Angel. What is your definition of a man? A man. Somebody that stands up for what he believes in. How and when, Deacon, were the Hells Angels founded? About 26 years ago in uh, uh, Purdue, California, San Bernardino. Well, what was the thing that brought the founders together? Well, I think how it started was like uh, there was a bomber squadron during World War II called the Hells Angels. When they got out of the, when they got, when the war was over, they got out of the service, they didn't have nothing to do. And they, like, uh, just kind of stayed together and decided to ride motorcycles on the weekends and party and have a good time. And uh, it just kind of, you know, started there and grew. Uh, the movie The Wild Ones came shortly after that. Uh, and there were two prime characters, motorcycle riders. One was Marlon Brando, the kind of soft-spoken person that most people identified with. He was black. He was compassionate, he was, uh, he was misunderstood, uh, he was all the things that uh, make for a sympathetic character. Uh, the other uh, leading role, played by Lee Marvin, was that of the big bad guy. Uh, the the kind of guy, he was the leader of his, uh, his motorcycle pack. Uh, he was, well, he was definitely the evil force, say, he's the bad guy, you know, nobody liked him. Which do you identify with of those two guys? Lee Marvin. Why, Sandy? Why? You know what? First of all, Marlon Brando is an imitation of uh, a uh, director's belief and dream. All he cared about was abroad, right? He, he forgot about his people. All he, you know, he, he, and he wrote a Triumph. We ride a Harley Davidson. Lee Marvin was wearing Levi's and a dirty shirt, or with a shirt, you know, his shirt, something he owned, something he believed in, not uh, a director's dream to dress Marlon Brando all in black, you know? And that gave us, you know, and motorcycle people, you know, a thought that for everybody that we're all black. You know, wearing black and, you know, bad guys and this and that. But he was a, he was a bully? He wasn't a bully. He was being himself. He, he was out for a good time. Uh, but he was at, out for a good time at the expense of a lot of other people. I don't think so. Maybe that's what you interpret it. I interpret it completely different. He was just being himself, you know. When he, was, when he got busted, he got busted, right? And he didn't snivel about it, you know, and when he was worried about his people. And, like, uh, when he got busted, he said, uh, tell Mama, send me a case of beer. Uh... There are lots of outlaw motorcycle clubs now, besides the Hells Angels. I mean, uh, I don't know how many Hells Angels there are. Uh, I don't know whether it numbers in the hundreds or the thousands. Maybe There's you can... Lots of them. How many? Lots oh, of them. a lot. That's classified lots? information. 1,000? 1,500? 500? That's classified information. Okay. I I... Well, what makes the Hells Angels different from all these others? I mean, why are you the most notorious? Why are you the ones that seem to be the, uh, uh, the example for the rest of your genre? Because we believe in what we're doing. Uh, but don't the other outlaws also believe in what they're doing, whether they're the stormtroopers from North Carolina or the breed from uh, Ohio or wherever they're from or uh, any of these others? No, I think they believe mainly in what, uh, you know, uh, what they've read and what they've seen. And uh, see, a lot of the movies and uh, stories, it falsifies, you know. It gives, uh, gives person, people a wrong impression. How so? Well... You know, like in the years before, like let's say in the years of uh, 1966 and in the 60s, right? A lot of things that were wrote about were true, and a lot of them weren't. It was the news media just blew everything up, and uh, 
a lot of people relate now to what happened then. Are you saying that the Hells Angels have left this, uh, the, the, their violent path behind them? Is Not that... really, no. You know, like if it's time to be violent, we can be violent. Uh, can you think of a situation where violence would be appropriate? Sure. Excuse me, second, brother. I could think of a perfect uh, situation that, Geraldo, the first time I met you, for correction, right, uh, when you started wanting to come up film us, right, you didn't come up and give us courtesy to come up and say, hey, you know what, I'm so-and-so, I'd like to be you know, introduced to such and such, and when you met, you know, uh, you know, uh, the president or whatever, right, then you even said, oh, sure, you could film. No, you took it upon yourself to film, right, and that's taken upon yourself, right, I've taken about from our privacy, right? And you know what? If I, I if, if it's people, but I like to be treated with respect. If you don't treat it with respect, then you know what? Shame on you. Then we don't treat you with respect. That's why we chase you down a block, cut your television cord. Uh, but is violence, uh, do you think, the solution to problems like that? I mean, to conflicts like that? Well, sometimes words don't, you know, you can only take words so far. But what if everybody thought the same way? Probably be a better world. Wouldn't it be a completely, a complete anarchy? Wouldn't it be a, a situation where everybody was fighting everybody and there was no order There'd and be no... be more respect in the world. If the strong were in charge and the weak think, were... I don't think, you know what, if, if you treat a man with respect, I, a man will give respect. If you don't treat him with respect, it's on you. Do you think that the law enforcement officials are uh, clamping down on you after all the sensational headlines, the gang rape? arrests, the murder arrests, Let me tell you about kind of gang stuff. rapes, right? We never had a conviction for rape in the history of the Hells Angels until last year in California, which we got, six brothers got set up by an attorney, uh, attorney general in California to get a position for, uh, a political position to, uh, to, to get, you know, uh, get himself ahead in politics. Uh, how many times have you been arrested, Sandy? Oh, several. How many? Do you remember? I don't know. I haven't looked at my yellow sheet. Deacon? Quite a few. I don't have any idea. Uh, how many Hells Angels are in jail right now? A lot. Um, doesn't that at any time give you second thoughts and maybe say that you should moderate your image and the it way you... work harder to get them out. One Hells Angel in the joint now. And Sonny Barger, the past president of the Oakland Charter, I went to the prison in Folsom uh, the prison at Folsom, Repressa, California, and spoke with Sonny and with James Griffin, who's called Fu, another member of the Hells Angels, and we have their interview. California, they call this place the end of the line. We're 25 miles northeast of Sacramento here in this fortress-like stockade behind me, built almost 100 years ago by convict laborers, Folsom Prison. This is where they keep the hard cases. There are 2,000 men here, all of them convicted felons, two of them members of the Hells Angels. I was escorted into the prison by Officer Max Price, but once inside, I had a difficult time convincing the warden that I was a legitimate newsman and not an undercover outlaw trying to smuggle drugs or women into his prison. The other Hells Angel is James Griffin, called Fu. As I said, he's been in jail for 13 of the last 14 years for possession of drugs and the violation of parole. Ralph Sonny Barger is not in prison for murder, as is widely assumed. He's serving 15 years to life for the possession of drugs. I asked him if... Are you still involved in the operation of the motorcycle club? I haven't seen a member or my old lady or anybody since I've been in this prison. But, Sonny, and you're not suggesting that the Hells Angels are like the 4-H club or the boys? I no, have no, no way of saying that. I'm saying we're not guilty of everything that people read about us. I'll give you an example of it, my murder trial. For nine weeks of trial, plus eight or nine months before that of probably once a week, front page or headline articles about Barger and his group in a murder trial. All right. Then the day the trial started, for nine weeks we had a headline every day on the, on the newspapers about the trial. And then the trial ended with an acquittal, not guilty. One day it says Barger found innocent. Now, how do you think one sentence of Barger found innocent compares with nine solid weeks of Barger in trial? The people forget all about they know Barg is in jail. They don't know whether he's in jail behind possession of an ounce of heroin or, possess, or of a murder beef. But they know I went to trial for nine weeks on a murder beef, and now they think I'm a murderer. We have civil rights uh, like American citizens. We are American citizens. We're probably as American as anybody could ever get. What about the comparisons that are made so frequently now, maybe because of the SWAT stickers and the, and the stormtrooper helmets? Uh, of Hell's Angels to 
uh, to the SS, to the Nazis. How do you react to that? That you are, in fact, uh, uh, militant uh, and almost fascist in your approach to life and your approach to other people. <laughs> I'd say that that reaction there is uh, Jewish propaganda. Tell me you more know, about that. Uh, you know what? Uh, they're still uh, beating the war drum uh, over uh, what happened in, in Europe in, in the Second World War. Uh, this uh, gets a, attention uh, to that situation over there. Uh, in no way can I see us no way relating to what happened in, in Germany uh, during the Second World War. Do you remember the Lynch Report? Yes, I remember the Lynch Report. Uh, when the Attorney General of California promised as a campaign platform that the Hells Angels would be absolutely eradicated from the state of California, how did you respond when you heard about that? I sort of laughed. Why? Well, what are they going to do, kill us? How did the Hells Angels support themselves? Uh, now, Deacon, do you have a job, or do any of the Hells Angels have jobs? Excuse me, brother. You know what, like, uh, you know, in, when you go to school, right, I always heard you got adequacy, right? You know, adequacy, you, you're such and such. There are certain questions you're never supposed to ask anybody. Right, you never ask a, an individual, well, how much money do you make? Or you're not supposed to ask an individual, well, you know, what do you do? Or that, and so, because other people, you know, that's courtesy, right? You know what, like, it was told to you earlier, you know, you know, Geraldo, that we all work, right? And like, uh, and some's got jobs and some have old ladies work, you know? I mean, uh, good job, brother. Uh, I, I really believe in etiquette, Sandy. It's just a question that people are curious about because... Well, I don't go uh, out to ask everybody else how they work, well, how much money they make. You can ask what, them. What everybody want to know about us for? Because people are curious about you, because you have made yourselves different. Uh, and people are curious about people yeah, who are different. Because we made ourselves different, everybody else is changing, too. Let's take a look at an interview I did uh, with Jerry Garcia, the lead guitarist of the Grateful Dead, uh, in California, in Northern California. That's all right, Mama. Jerry Garcia met the Hells Angels in the middle 60s when writer and counterculture hero Ken Kesey had them all over to his place for a party. There are not too many people you meet that you can like say, wow, there's somebody who's like, you know, real, really serious about what they're doing, whatever they're doing, you know. Like there's a lot of people who are doing, doing things halfway or doing them, talking about doing things. But Hells Angels are people who are real serious about what they're doing. They got, they're doing about, it for What keeps. about if what they're, yeah. But yeah. what about if what they're doing is, is antisocial? You know, the general image... Well, what is. isn't antisocial, man? Let's start from there, you know. <laughs> I think this is an antisocial society. You know, I think the world is antisocial. The Oakland Tribune headlines for uh -huh. the year that, that Sonny Barger went to, went to prison. Uh -huh. uh, the horror stories they told about the Hells Angels on an almost daily basis. Wild allegations, some sometimes sensationalism, other times. Uh, uh, but some residue of truth at least at some level they aren't the 4-h club and they aren't the boy scouts <coughs> of america the hell's angels are uh, uh a motorcycle club that is generally known as an outlaw motorcycle club and that has had numerous brushes with the law uh, -huh. uh does any of those kinds of things affect the way you feel about them no because i'm sort of an outlaw space myself you know what i mean i'm no heavy duty outlaw but you know i mean i'm a bust I've been busted. I've been in jail. You know, I know where all that stuff is at. I mean, that's and 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 I'm doing that because I feel strongly enough about it to do it, and I don't care if I have to get popped for it. You know, there's like might be a point where I would care. You know, I might not want to die, <laughs> but I would be willing to get popped anyway. You know what I mean? It's like it depends on how committed you are. But Hell's Angels are committed on a very heavy level. I can really appreciate that. You know what I mean? Are you afraid of them ever? Sure. Sure. Why? Because they're scary, man. You know, they're they're all big, you know, and strong and and good at in in all the violent spaces. You know, they got that covered. You know, I mean, scary is what one of the things Hell's Angels are. I, I think that what Jerry said about scary is one of the things Hell's Angels are is true. Uh, the we invited a lot of people who are the alleged victims of Hell's Angels violence onto the show and we promised to protect their identities and everything else but they were just too frightened to come on. Uh, we asked a lot of law enforcement people to come on but they said that they would also rather not come on. Uh, 
fear and the way you generate this aura of fear and make people afraid of you uh, is a real, real thing. And I think that I personally, uh, it's the thing that I find most objectionable, uh, the fact that you make so many people afraid. Uh, why? I think most people are afraid because we're sure of ourselves. You know, in a physical and, uh, sense, you mean that you could take anybody sense. who... In a mental sense. I mean, I think we generate, uh, I think we generate pos positive... Uh, you know, like vibrations, and like uh, most people can't, uh, I don't think they're mentally uh, capable of handling them. Why are the women, uh, it, you have this terrible reputation, I mean, uh, in all honesty. There's some pretty looking women over there. And uh, I don't understand why they come. Do they come to be, uh, uh, to be raped and, and abused? I think they come uh, because we're men. You know, it's, you know, it's how like, do, how do they know like, uh, How do they well, know what? That you're, that you're men and not just sadistic <laughs> bullies. Well... Yeah. Probably, probably part of it they're inquisitive to start with, you know, and the ones that are inquisitive leave early and the ones that uh, come for seriousness to stay for a long time. We meet some of your brothers and old ladies and sweeties right over here. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Vinny, who I think has the distinction in the New York charter, at least, of being uh, the biggest. Are you the biggest, Vinny? Well, I weigh about 320, you know, but uh, one of my brothers weighs 335. Uh, which one is that? Oh, he's right there. You want to stand up? Let's see. You don't want to... Ah, there he is. 325? Uh, Vinny, stand up a second. Let, let people see. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How much do you weigh, Vin? 320. Uh, what do you have back here? Oh, my knife. You don't mind if I... Uh... No, I do. You help yourself, you know? If I didn't mind, you wouldn't do it anyway, right? Uh, what do you use it for? I mean... Uh, you... peeling bananas and oranges and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, this is your wife over here, right, Ben? Yeah, it's my wife right there. Will you stand up? Uh, I, I noticed that you're with child. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know whose child it is, you know? We're going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what kind of, uh, let's see, Evan, you really block out the whole screen. <laughs> that guy, uh, what kind of, of life do you think that your child will have with, uh, with the Hells Angels? A good one. But if his life expectancy, like the rest of the Hells Angels, is only 35 years, I mean, how are you going to take care of yourself? Yeah, you might be president of the United States, you, know, you never know, right? But, I mean, what happens to you if something happens to him? Well, I'll be taken care of. By the other uh, fellows? Well, she'll be taken care of, you know, which other way has got to be taken care of, right? Uh, thanks for coming, fellas. Let me go back over here. Are you really proud of them all, Sandy? <laughs> of course. Uh, thank you both for coming on. Thank you for having us. Uh, you know, like can I say one thing? Please, Andy, anything uh, you want to. And Dick, can Dick can say them too, right? both, You both take a closing, right. closing statement, okay? I just, you know, like, uh, you know, Sonny's and Foo's interview, you know, like we hope that a lot of people, especially in California and the, and the penal system and the board, will realize and be individuals when they see somebody come up in front of a parole board, right, instead of changing it right, or being uh, uh, influenced by outsiders, man. If you know what, be an individual. If you believe somebody is, you know, not guilty or somebody uh, hasn't done something, then you know what, fight for it. Because that was, that's what made America, America. And if you don't, if you're not an individual, then you what, you know, pack it in. And like, uh, you know, there's a lot of people are forgetting about that. That's like, what don't convict somebody for, you know, what they are, convict of what they've done. Okay. It's extremely difficult to make a valid comment about the Hells Angels, especially when a couple of dozen of them or so are sitting in your studio, but let me try. The secret, I think, lies in something Sandy Alexander said earlier about the movie The Wild Ones. He said that the angels identify not with the compassionate, misunderstood character portrayed by Marlon Brando, but rather with the big bad guy played by Lee Marvin. Now, Marvin's role, as we said earlier, and as you might recall, was that of an arrogant and even sadistic bully. In fairness, and we must be fair even to the Hells Angels, it must be pointed out that many, if not most, of their more notorious exploits have been greatly exaggerated by the media. 
But even excluding these headline cases, there's a brutally casual, seemingly indiscriminate and almost inevitable violence about them, and it's as much a part of the Hells Angels world as their motorcycles. When a group of them get together, they seem like barely tamed wild animals. At times, you can ask them to roll over or jump through hoops, and you can even put your head in their mouths. But it doesn't take much cause, real or imagined, for them to abandon this thin veneer of civilization and turn again to their natural state. As Jerry Garcia said, scary is what the Hells Angels are. Melba Moore is next, if Good Night America continues after this. Thank <laughs> you.